Universities were once a place where only the elite could study. Only those from wealthy backgrounds could get a degree. In 1973, the Whitlam Labor government abolished university fees, making university education accessible to all Australians. However, in 1989, both sides of government agreed that free tertiary education was untenable. The much loved or hated HEX was introduced, which allows students to defer payment of their fees until they have gained employment and reached a certain salary threshold. Between 1971 and 1991, the proportion of men with a degree or higher qualification rose from 3% to 8%, while the proportion of women rose from 1% to 7%. In May 2016, 25.3% of people aged 15 to 74 years reported their highest educational attainment as a bachelor's degree or higher. If you just focus on 25 to 34 year olds, that percentage rises to 37%. Clearly, Australians are becoming more educated. Part of this increase is a consequence of the progressive upgrading to degree status of courses which were at diploma level or lower in 1971. These include fields such as nursing, teaching, surveying, accounting, winemaking and theatre production. One must ask, is it really necessary for a teacher or theatre producer to have a degree? Just because a teacher has a degree doesn't necessarily make them a good teacher. There are probably many people out there who would make great teachers, but they don't have any formal qualification. Professor Simon Marginson from the University of Melbourne's Centre for the Study of Higher Education stated, As the number of graduates increases, the value of each individual graduate's degree goes down. In modern day Australia, universities effectively get funding based off the number of students they enrol. Obviously, a university with only 100 students would collapse, so it is in their best interest to get as many students as possible. Consequently, universities now run slick advertising campaigns. They have entire marketing departments dedicated to attracting more students, dollar signs in their eyes. More students equals more revenue. Universities have pretty much become businesses, and students are their commodity. But what effect has this had on society? First of all, there are too many students getting degrees. Having a degree doesn't make you stand out anymore. Jobs that once involved on-the-job training now demand that all applicants have a degree. Anybody with the motivation could learn to be a computer programmer by studying online tutorials. But can they get a job without a formal qualification? Probably not. This has led to an overqualified workforce. Graduates are doing jobs way below their station. This is a concept known as academic inflation. If a company can hire someone with a degree, or one without, of course they're going to get the one with the degree. If there are two candidates, one with a master's degree and one with a bachelor's, then the one with the master's is going to become the new McDonald's shift manager. This puts pressure on all young people to get a degree. But once everyone has a degree, obviously the value of having one goes down. Just as if everyone was given a million dollars tomorrow, nobody would feel rich, except of course for the billionaires. For a young person, ultimately this means they have to study three to six years longer than their parents did to get the same job. That equates to three to six years of debt that their parents didn't have. And it's not like their wages are any higher. Actually, wage growth has slowed dramatically in recent years. In 2012, I did a Master of Computing. Did it get me a job? Yes. Did I like my job? No. Did I really need to go to uni to learn what I learnt? No. Everything I learnt at uni, I could have just learnt online. Learning how to program in Java does not require a university professor. Learning to write an Android app does not require a classroom. My masters could have been studied entirely for free online. So why do companies not hire people who are good at coding but don't have degrees? Because it's easier for them to vet applicants. Students are getting into massive debt so that companies can find new staff a little bit easier. It's a very silly situation. Secondly, universities pump out graduates, often forgetting about quality. As a university employee myself, I've talked to a couple of university insiders and they've basically admitted that student results are modified to suit a predefined bell curve distribution. This makes sense from the teacher's perspective. If a teacher were to fail 90% of their students, then the university would be asking questions. The teacher could potentially lose their job. Similarly, if 90% of students got a high distinction, questions would also be asked. It is the job of the university lecturer to make sure that the correct percentage of students pass the course. It reflects badly on their teaching if too many students pass or too many fail. This has led to a dumbing down of university education. 
The quality of students that I've seen of late has been atrocious. Students who fail their assignments and exams are getting second chances. Students who have a family event to attend are being granted assignment extensions. This would never have happened even 20 years ago. Back in 2000, I failed an exam for Asian studies. I confused Taiwan with Thailand in the essay question. Admittedly, I only failed by 1%. Despite me having been hospitalised for part of that semester, having undergone multiple knee surgeries, and despite me being on crutches, the faculty refused to cut me any slack and made me resit the course in its entirety. Nowadays, if a student stubs their toe on the way to the exam centre, they'd be allowed to resit the exam six months later. PhDs have become the norm for university lecturers. Does having a PhD make you a good teacher? Certainly not. I've met some terrible teachers in my time. Attaining a PhD just means that you are able to write a thesis and do a bit of research about a very specific topic. Here's an example thesis title I found online. Feel Good Factors at Work – A Study of the Roles of Positive Affectivity and Individualism as Moderators of the Relationship Between Emotional Intelligence and Work Well-Being. Hmm, interesting. We have to remember that many of the great entrepreneurs didn't receive a university degree. People such as Richard Branson, Steve Jobs, Larry Ellison, Michael Dell, and Rachel Ray. Luckily, some companies are ditching their degree requirements altogether. Ernst and Young got rid of all degree requirements in 2015. They said that a candidate's degree had no correlation to their future job performance. This has been shown to be true in various studies as well as anecdotally. I've had colleagues with lots of formal qualifications, but they have not been good at their job. They've relied too heavily on their academic qualifications and haven't focused enough on their communication and practical skills. Penguin Random House have also ditched their degree requirements for all applicants. So where does all this leave us? Clearly many young people feel they have to go to university. For some jobs this makes sense, a medical doctor for example. But for other jobs such as computer game designer, you don't really need a qualification. If you want to work for a big company, yeah, you probably need a degree. But if you just want to go out with your mates and design the next big Android app, you can do it right now. You don't need that piece of paper. Actually, if you just want to go out and create your own startup, why waste three to six years studying at all? Startups are inherently agile. They should be able to adapt to the changing world around them. Wasting time in a lecture theatre learning the history of contemporary Asian poetry is probably not going to help you become a better internet entrepreneur. Not to say that contemporary Asian poetry isn't interesting, but it's more of a hobby than a course. Too many people are getting degrees. Universities have become money-making institutions. Teachers are pushing students through the sausage factory just to keep the wheels turning. Degrees have lost their value. Companies are slowly seeing this and dropping their entry requirements. Almost anything can now be studied for free on the internet. Ultimately, university education will become less and less important. Technology changes so rapidly now that what I learnt five years ago in my Master of Computing is almost irrelevant now. My suggestion, if you want to learn something new, go out and learn it. Watch a YouTube tutorial, throw yourself right in and learn to code. You don't need some crusty teacher showing outdated videos in a stuffy lecture hall.